All right, well, uh, good afternoon and welcome to everyone. Uh, we're excited to get a chance to uh, both see and talk to uh, our special guest, Mr. Ray Hall and Sato San. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. It's always uh, nice to talk racing, especially when we're having such a, a great season. Um, <laughs> so we want to thank both of you for uh, taking time to, to meet with us. I know everyone on this call uh, really appreciates it. Um, as you can see, we've got about 25 people or so online representing Kahin today. And we have members ranging from uh, our production associates all the way to our president. Welcome, Amano San. Um, but before we get to those questions, um, we'd like to uh, hear from our guests. So to start with, um, I'd like to offer some time for uh, Mr. Rahal to share a few words. And I want to thank Amano San for his support, all your support that are that are uh, uh, tuning in today, and of course, all the, the people of Kahin who uh, who uh, follow us and support us. It's uh, it's uh, much uh, appreciated. It's very important to us. Of course, Kahin has a long history of involvement in motorsports, particularly in Japan, and and in many cases with Honda. So we're uh, we're we're pleased that we're just one more example of that uh, and winning uh, the 500 for Honda again. Uh, I don't know if any of you know, but we won, RLL won Honda's first Indy 500 back in 2004. So um, it's, a, uh, it's a thrill to do it again, as I'm sure Takuma will, will tell you. And so it's, um, it's, for me personally, it's two different types of satisfaction. Winning as a driver just uh, cements your career. It, uh, uh, you know, you'll always carry that, that, that uh, title of Indy 500 winner, no matter how old you are. And, uh, and there's not many races that can make claim to that. In fact, I think Indy's probably about it. And then of course, but of course, winning as an owner, and once again, you know that just all the details and the little things that you never even think of as a driver that go into winning. Uh, and to see, you know, we've been putting this team together with, with your assistance. We've been putting this team together over the last five years. And it's particularly satisfying to see the kind of year we're having, the performance we're having across the board and of course to win in the, you know, the, the race with the most pressure, the most prestige to, to win that. I feel great pride. Um, but anyway, may, maybe enough for me, maybe uh, I'm sure you want to hear from the guy who actually won the race uh, rather than just the guy who just talks about it. And that would be Takuma. Takuma. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Bobby. Um, and uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone in the Kahin. Um, like Bobby said, it's absolutely echoing what he says. You know, it, it's just a just amazing, uh, 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 you know, amazing day and, and outstanding performance from the team. So uh, the, all the credit, you know, should go to the team because uh, you know, first and third finishing in 500, it's not just a luck. You know, I just like like Bobby said, it's just the details of uh, working. Uh, uh, you know, dedication. All the boys did uh, a fantastic job from the uh, absolutely fantastic from for the for the team. So. Uh, you know, the, the Cahin plant being in Indiana, um, shame that, you know, no one could come to the Indiana Forest Motor Speedway that day. Nevertheless, all the fans, you know, couldn't come on 357 people. But, you know, like Lipitli said, you know, we know the millions of people watching on t TV at home safely, hopefully. And, um, you know, we had a special day. And, and uh, I show you this one. It's very honor to have uh, Indy 500 wing. You know, this is, uh, this is something I, I was always dreaming about it. And uh, my first uh, achievement was done in 2017 with a different team. But I particularly, particularly wanted to, to do it with uh, Ray Hall Eternal Learning and Racing. Now, needless to say, I think as many of the people knew that uh, what happened to 2012, I couldn't deliver this link to the Bobby. You know, it's just the one last, I don't know, it's a, maybe less than two miles. To, to, to get this ring, um, but with David and Mike Lanning and, and three uh, uh, my um, and true big uh, owners, and I was you know finally be able to deliver a great day at uh, a few weeks ago. So thanks again for the fantastic job from the entire team, and uh, I'm really proud to be the number 30 cast pilot. And of course, you know Kehin's uh, support is one of many, but. I think without uh, you know you guys and support, you know we, we wouldn't be racing here as competitively like 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 uh, like uh, um, Bobby said. So thanks again, and uh, we can answer lots of questions today, and uh, hopefully have a, a great time this afternoon. Hello. Out of all the different tracks you visit and race throughout each season, 
Which is your favorite and why? Is it the technical aspect, the memories, the location? Well, um, I go first. Um, obviously, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no reason. You know, it's, uh, it's just a history, just a place, atmosphere. Now, of course, atmosphere this year is a very sad, runry, but we know Indianapolis Motor Speedway is, is always a special. So, uh, you know, as a personal driver, you know, go to the road course and street course is always challenging, but Indy 500 is an absolute exception. So I love that place and particularly for this year, you know, the win with, with the team, with the number 30 boys, it was just a fantastic feeling. So I love Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So you mentioned the new aero screen that was on the cars this year. Was that much of an uh, adjustment or an obstacle to overcome as far as vision or anything like that at the Indy 500 this year? I think it's amazingly, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not much different. Um, we're all concerned about, you know, the vision distortion and some of the reflection for the night race. And it is some, um, it is some. But uh, for me, the, the most concerned thing is that before jumping a car, I was concerning about the airflow because... Uh, for us at Cahan, it's uh, pretty awesome seeing our logo on your car. What was your familiarity with Cahan before our sponsorship? Well, I know about the uh, Cahan make uh, a great air conditioning, which is uh, missing my race car big time. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think today with Aero Screen, now's the time really Cahan immediately bent to the uh, race car air conditioning. Now that'd be good. No, I mean. That's a kind of a kind of a little joke and then a half serious too. But uh, you know, Kehin brand, you know, with a close relationship with the Honda for, for many, many years. And uh, particularly for me, the carburetor or you know, with a slide, you know, CL cab, you know, for what we spoke about 30 years ago maybe, uh, for the carburetors. But um, you know, it's always Kehin's product is just the top of the range, related with the mud racing and um, you know in Japan, you know, super GTs and you know a huge Kehin car is uh, actually now the winning championship too. So uh, I think um, I think it's it's a, it's a, for me particular. Yes, Kehin doesn't sell the product for the consumer, you know, for for the daily store. But for me, the huge relationship with the cars and industry for the mud racing. So uh, a, uh, I was very excited when I saw Kehin logo on the on the Ray Hall car. So uh, you know, really appreciate your support. Awesome, thank you. If I may, uh, if I may say, I'm in the automobile business too. Uh, I have a number of Honda dealerships, amongst others, and of course, so uh, we know the Kehin name quite well. But I think the first time I really heard about it was back when I was running a little Honda motorcycles around trying not to uh, kill myself and uh, you know understood the, the relationship there and, and of course the quality is as Takuma said but you know we uh, we uh, we you know we, we depend on the quality of cane with through our Honda through our cars you know how we maintain them in our dealerships and the warranties and what have you so it's uh, obviously a uh, it's obviously a, a, a great name. And of course, I, and as I said earlier in the beginning, um, I was thrilled to see Kehin join us in particular being a, a, a works, a factory Honda team. And, uh, and of course, uh, as Takuma was saying, the, the, um, uh, the, the clear uh, relationship that, that Kehin has had with uh, Honda over the years and in racing. So um, just really pleased to, uh, when, when Kehin came on board. All right, sorry. There you go. Uh, can you explain your no attack, no chance philo philosophy to the group? Okay. Um, I, basically, I have to go back to the ages, ages ago. Um, so, fundamental no attack philosophy, it is obviously never give up, um, which you can apply uh, many of the things you, in your life, not necessarily with the mud racing, because my philosophy firstly comes from the bicycle race. Um, if I make a longer story to make it short, um, I, I, I'm from the uh, no background from racing family. So uh, my both parents had no idea for the racing and uh, all I had was just metal frame with a push bike. And, um, but of course I love the cars and mud racing, you know, since when I was a kid. Uh, in fact, my dad took me at uh, Japanese Grand Prix in Suzuka. For the, for the first time in Formula One, that was my 10 years, I was 10 years old boy. And that day I got the dream about it. But since then I had to wait the next 10 years 
until start racing. So those 10 years period, I was, uh, I was uh, racing in the bicycle uh, quite seriously. So I won the, uh, the All Japan High School Championship and as well as uh, individual uh, race in university, I won one race. So that time I was quite seriously doing that and aiming for the Olympics at that time. Now I don't think I, I can make it. But anyway, the, the, the point is in, in, a, in a bicycle race, many of you know, are probably aware that it's all about air drag. And so the guy basically sitting behind to get the toe and uh, conserve the energy and then you have to you have to make most of it for the final but that's uh, that's kind of a related with luck too so usually for the great bike rider is, is basically go to the, go up to the attacking by himself and that's what we call the attack and usually what happened to the uh, to the, um, the big hill climb so let's say alpinese or pilenese the, the great guy is basically they going attack and unless you really attack there's no way to, you can win the race. So that's come from no attack, no chance philosophy myself in the bicycle days. And when I start driving, still no attack, no chance. So um, that's why my, my, my uh, as it's me, it's, it's not I'm following what I say, but just what I do, it is, it is kind of no attack, no chance. But, um, but it's, a, it's a great, uh, great to sometimes, but it's not great sometimes. And Bobby knows that, but <laughs> my ex owner, the, uh, the Jimmy Vassa say, oh, to keep us out, no attack, no chance. But, you know, he, he also said uh, too much attack is also no chance too. So uh, it, it, was, it was a funny <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> Need some balance there, I guess. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh... Um, I understand that you're staying with a family in Carmel, Indiana. Uh, what is your daily life in Indiana like outside of racing following the winning the Indy 500? Yeah, it's... Um... <laughs> It's a kind of uh, it's a kind of it tough this year, you know. It, that usually for 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 the se in the season, you know, every two weeks we go to the racing. In some cases, like a crazy summer, sometimes four consecutive weeks of the racing. So you you you're constantly traveling, and um, uh, usually I don't have opportunity to, to staying at one place more than two weeks. You know, it's usually 10 days time you go to somewhere, somewhere, somewhere around. But uh, the nice thing in Indiana, of course, uh, my English, you know, the, not English, the American family, you know, Stephen Sue, they're you know, sharing the house together and have a fun, you know, we, he has got a the great basement and we have a uh, drinking wine, watching TVs and watching in movies and stuff like that. So it was a fun. And uh, all the communities and cheering on us too, because uh, sometimes when I traveling and come back, and like, oh, Tukuma, you come back and congrats on the last weekend and stuff like that. It's just all the neighbors and naturally just the cheering on us. So it's nice. And of course, uh, you know, a lot of Japanese community in Indiana, uh, like your company. So, uh, you know, we have a several a great Japanese restaurant, which I always enjoy. And um, I remember first time I came to India about 10, 11 years ago, there was no ramen shop. And maybe there was a one, but now we have a three or four, you know, authentic proper ramen. So that's... Um, not to seeing that it's it's a great uh, Japanese community, um, you know, growing and uh, certainly have a great fun in the Indiana time. Okay, um, has there ever been a time during a race that you said to yourself, "I should have chosen a different career"? I no, I don't think so. Um, I love I love what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I love just the racing. I love the driving. Having said that, I think uh, Bobby would agree that, you know, the race driver in the entire whole career, apart from uh, you are leading the championship big time all the time, you know, it's, it's, it's just maybe less than 10% percent you will be happy in the car. Another 90% is just all about frustration. And, um, you know, you go, you go to the racetrack, you're driving for the fast car, usually you're happy because if you're at the hobby, you're driving a go fast car, it's just amazing. But as a professional, um, if you are tense behind the guy in front and you are uh, landing on 10th, for example, or 15th, for example, or even the fifth, you, you, are, you are upsetting yourself and you beat it by somebody, which is a lot of frustration until you actually read the race and until you actually won the race or actually you got the pole position on, on, the, uh, on the fastest time at the qualification, all those three things, you'd be happy. Otherwise you hate it. And I hate it too. Having said that, you know, 
it is all about challenge and it is all about improvement and it is all about working with a team. And that's, that's uh, I think, something I really love. And uh, when you have a winning, in particular, like let's say for Indy 500 winning, it is just nothing like it. Nothing like it, the feeling in it, right? Like Bobby said, it's just life-changing, you know, forever. And now those uh, things, even you sacrifice 90% of your time, I don't mind. I'm working on it for there's just one thing which I wanted to win. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't choose a different career. If I reborn again, I think I would be still race car driver.